Well, good morning, pharmacy aficionados. Welcome back again this month to www.salesystem.com.au. My name is Glenn Guilfoyle, and I head up the specialist pharmacy group called The Next Level. And we come to you each month like this with a video bite of something uh, hopefully interesting and useful to pro promote and provoke your thinking about how you will continue to evolve your service model at the dispensary towards a, a total hosting and complete solution, service oriented and forward dispensing model. And this month, I wanna talk about a notion that I call counterculture. Um, counterculture or counter discipline, and I put it to you, it's a virtue too compelling to ignore. Okay, so as consumers, pharmacists, like Joe Public at large, we're all conditioned to certain counter uh, disciplines in the host and array of classic retail environments. Let's uh, start off with your ubiquitous supermarket. The signage and the culture across pretty much all uh, brands of supermarkets is such that um, we're conditioned that if we want self-service, we go to that bay of checkouts uh, where we can self-scan and self-pay and away we go. If we want service alternatively, we go to the more regular manned checkouts and particularly if we've got 12 items or less, we go to the express checkout. If we've got more than 12, we go to one of the others, unless of course we're in one of those very sophisticated supermarkets that even have specialist checkouts uh, for more than 12 items. But if we're not buying lollies and we're sugar free, or if we're bringing our own plastic bags. Of course, if we want customer service, we go to the uh, customer service kiosk desk, usually placed somewhere in the middle of the, uh, all of the battery of checkouts. Um, let's take your local branch we will often be conditioned and, and um, confronted by those tensor barrier type devices that will help the bank staff corral and marshal us in an orderly queue type fashion to the different teller and service counters so that we can be served accordingly. Uh, in some of the larger branches, we might even be greeted and uh, met by a maitre d' who will triage us in accordance with our service need and which counter we need to go to. Um, similarly, at the airport, uh, the use of tensor barriers is quite uh, well known uh, in terms of orderly queuing and marshalling us to head towards either, uh, again, like the supermarkets, the self check-in, um, self baggage um, uh, type uh, uh, kiosks, or if we want to uh, go to the uh, counter for service, uh, there'll be different services and queues for uh, if we just want bag drop versus if we want the full check-in service. And of course, there are other counters for ticketing, customer service, uh, baggage, etc. Um, let's take the aspirational Apple Store experience. Apple's famous for uh, as you uh, uh, go into an Apple Store, you will traditionally uh, be greeted and served by someone who will take you to a counter with a subject matter expert at that counter um, to help you with the need that you've expressed that you've come in for. But typically they do such a great job, uh, the original subject matter expert does such a great job in teaching you about things you don't know and then you will quite often be hosted to a different counter with a different subject matter expert uh, to explain uh, another product and service that you might have uh, found some interest in. I could go on, uh, but I won't. Um, but as consumers uh, subjected to and conditioned to all these sorts of retail cultural counter experiences, we, we also, who also happen to be pharmacists, what do we subject our consumers and customers to? Allow me to generalize and upfront my apologies for those who this does not apply to. However, as a generalization, we tend in retail pharmacy not to employ these counter culture systems. Why? Have we got it right in retail pharmacy and all these other retail environments got it wrong? Mm, I think not. 
are we so different because we're so health and medication oriented? Mm, again, I think not. We may or may not uh, clearly sign our counters, script in, script out, OTC, etc. Whether we do or don't, we often uh, let the customers come wherever they want or wherever we want in terms of those counters to serve them for whatever reason they've come in for. We may provide one, two, even three so-called back counters uh, for this type of service, but in terms of the total linear uh, real estate counter uh, a frontage that we offer, we tend to apply the 80-20 rule or tend to just let it happen. In other words, 20% uh, of customers will typically be served at, uh, sorry, 80% of customers will typically be served at just 20% of the total uh, counter real estate available. So what's wrong with such a comparatively laissez-faire approach? Well, it fosters congestion on both sides of the counters, both on the staff side and on the customer side. And what's so wrong with congestion? Well, it destroys smooth traffic flows. Again, both on the staff side and on the customer side. And what's so important about smooth traffic flows? Well, it offers efficiency and speed of processing by the staff uh, over the over on the staff side of the counters and greater control of customer traffic flows through your all-important product uh, gondola aisles as health customers are coming into and out from the dispensary at the rear of the pharmacy. It also fosters greater effectiveness uh, in terms of the customer's quiet and um, uh, comprehensive conversation with a pharmacist about the health and medication issues at hand. So <clears throat> by dedicating service counters to specific types of service, script in, script out, OTC being the most notable ones, and aligning your traffic flows, both sides of the counters accordingly, this provides the opportunity for very dedicated and specialized service almost like a service hub at that counter. Think about how closely you might be able to assemble, reassemble all of the relevant product services and information that might be needed at those dedicated counters, script in, script out, OTC. And think about how that might look from a customer's experience in terms of a complete solution, a complete conversation with the serving pharmacists having all the tools of the trade at the fingertips, therefore not needing to break stride, break eye contact and break the conversation with the customer in order to offer a more complete solution. Efficiency and effectiveness, two often opposing forces in many pursuits, but it not, need not be that way and it doesn't have to be that way in your pharmacy. Think about or think differently about the virtues I'm extolling in terms of counterculture and how you might reassemble your people, processes and products accordingly um, to give a greater customer experience. I hope that's been useful and provides you some uh, food for thought and I look forward to coming back next month. And of course, if you'd like to extend this conversation one-on-one, -on -one, we're only a phone call away. Glenn Gilfoyle, The Next Level. Bye for now.